2019. COVID-19 came along. You may sit down, please. And at first it was like, if you got infected, that's a death sentence. Remember here in, in Nigeria, they were building emergency hospitals, isolation centers. But we're here in March 2022. We're here. A few may have fallen along the way, but I tell you what, you're here. You're here. And then right now, we're probably closer to a world war than we've ever been before. I was probably still a very young man when we had the Cuban Missile Crisis, and that was close. But, you know, in a couple of days it blew over. But today, it's close. Now, I'm not saying this to frighten anybody, but when things are beyond your comprehension, what do you do? What do you do? You go to him. You go to him. Because there is no question that he has no answer for. Because there is no situation that he has not seen even from the very foundations of the world. There is nothing that can baffle him. There is nothing that perturbs him. There is nothing that can make him anxious. So if you're here and you're being anxious, you're being anxious by yourself. God is not anxious. He's not anxious. And, and I found a scripture, and I want to read it to you, and I've chosen the message version of the Bible. The, the message Bible is a paraphrase. It's, it's not a translation. It's taken a translation and it's explaining it in a simple a matter, a way as possible. So the, the paraphrases are not always very accurate. But in Isaiah chapter 40, and I start in verse 22, the Bible says God sits high above the round ball of the earth. King James says the circle of the earth. God sits high above. Not solar systems above. Not the universe above. Galaxies above. I, I don't know how many light years it will take us to travel from this, the smallest galaxy in, in the universe, to the furthest from here. God sits high above the round ball of the earth. The people look like mere ants. He stretches out the skies like a canvas. Yes, like a tent canvas to live under. The scripture is drawing us to the bigness, if that's a, if that's a, 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 a true word, is drawing us to the bigness, to the almightiness, to the all-powerful God. And, and so today, I want you to take a short time and compare yourself. If the Bible says you look like an ant, Compare yourself to God. If you are just an ant, can you ever question him? You know, the Yoruba language refers to the king as kabiesi. That word was actually separated for God. The one without question. The one we didn't even question. He sits above the round ball of the earth, far above your imagination. 
And then in verse 23, it says, He ignores what all the princes say and do. The rulers of the earth count for nothing. Are you worried about Putin? Are you worried about him? God isn't. Not even for a moment. God is not perturbed. This is what he says. The rulers, the princes and rulers don't amount to much. Like seeds barely rooted, just sprouted, they shrivel when God blows on them. Like flecks of chaff, they're gone with the wind. Remember Adolf Hitler. At the time, it seemed as if nothing could stop him. And he unleashed evil against the world. Can you imagine somebody putting Jews into chambers, gas chambers, and gassing them to death? But one day, he took his own weapon against himself. God is not perturbed. Trump doesn't worry him. And I won't name any others for now. I was going to come to Nigeria. But I said, let me just hold my peace. And then, in verse 25, he asks a very important question. So who is like me? Who is like me? Who can hold a candle to me? And I'm sharing from this scripture because I want you to settle it permanently in your mind that God is absolutely in control. Absolutely. Nothing will baffle God. So who is like me? Who holds a candle to me? says the Lord. And my message Bible says, says the holy. That word holy means separated, sanctified, set apart. God is set apart from everyone and everything else. God is God all by himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then he points us to nature and says, look at the night skies. Who do you think made all this? Who marches this army of stars out each night? Have you gone out on a clear night, on a cloudless night, and looked at the stars? And you can only see a fragment of the stars from wherever you look. Have you imagined that the stars continue to go in their courses? They don't collide with one another. Have you imagined how they say it's not nine anymore, it's eight. The, the, the Pluto is, a, is not a planet. But, but have you imagined how the planets go around the sun the earth does it in exactly 365.3 something days. The earth goes round one circle around the sun. And in that circle, the position of the earth gives summer, winter, autumn, spring, creates seasons. Who did this? Did this happen as a result of some explosion, a big bang? impossible and as we stand here the earth is revolving on its axis that's what gives us day 
at night. For those of us close to the equator, we get almost an equal length of day and night. But for some people, they get six months of day and six months of night. Who did this? Who did this? And, and, and so why do we worry? Why do we become anxious? Who marches this army of stars out each night, counts them off, calls each one by name, so magnificent, so powerful, and never overlooks a single one? Do you think God forgot about you? Do you think that your situation has become too difficult for him, that he has just chosen to ignore you? He never forgot. If you don't see the answer, it's coming. If you don't see it, it's coming. It's on the way. Hallelujah, somebody. And then God addresses his people. He addresses his people in verse 27. Why would you ever complain, O Jacob, or whine, Israel, saying, God has lost track of me. He doesn't care what happens to me. Let me let you into a secret. God cares more than you care. He, he cares what happens to you even more than you do. The Bible didn't tell us that he knows how many hairs we have on our head. It doesn't tell us that he knows how many hairs. It tells us he numbered. So God was numbering your hair. At the same time, he was numbering his hair. You see, he knows how many hairs he had yesterday. He knows how many hairs he will have tomorrow. He, he numbers your hairs. So if God takes the trouble to number your hairs, why would he want cancer to ravage your body? I come against every cancer that has come up against anyone under the sound of my voice. And I declare it, I command it to shrink and shrivel because God did not put it there and he does not want it there in the name of Jesus Christ. He doesn't care what happens to me. And, and God answers in verse 28. He says, don't you know anything? Don't you know anything? Haven't you been listening? God doesn't come and go. <laughs> you say, a mountain today, valley tomorrow. No, 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 not with God. You can be in the mountain today, on the mountain today, and in the valley tomorrow, but God doesn't go and come. He's the unchanging changer. God doesn't change, hallelujah. He doesn't come and go. God lasts. He lasts. He doesn't finish. He doesn't get tired. He doesn't lose control. God lasts. He's creator of all you can see or imagine. He doesn't get tired out doesn't pause to catch his breath. I mean, it doesn't matter how athletic you are. <laughs> you have to pause once in a while to catch your breath. But God doesn't pause. God doesn't pause. He doesn't need to catch his breath. He is the owner of breath. Amen. And then the last part of this verse says, and he knows 
everything inside out. Inside out. You can't hide anything from God. If you thought you were successful, you're not. He knows everything inside out. He knows the origin. He knows the destiny. He knows everything inside out. And then Isaiah begins to speak a prescription for us to get out from the anxiety, from the, the um, concerns, the cares. In verse 29, he says, He energizes those who get tired. Are you tired? Are you tired? Listen, you will get tired. It's part of being a human being. You will get tired. But you mustn't stay tired. You must know what to do to get out of the tiredness. Amen? He energizes those who get tired. His energy is not... What are those energy drinks? <laughs> it's not that kind of energy. Red Bull. <laughs> no, that's not the kind of energy that God brings. He brings the energy of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He gives fresh strength. To drop out. I, I don't think this scripture is talking about people who drop out of school. But even the people that drop out of school, God is not done with them. He will still give them fresh energy. It's the people who dropped out of their business, who dropped out of their marriage, who dropped out of one thing or the other says he, he gives fresh strength to people that drop out. If you ever dropped out of anything, it's time to drop back in. Amen. Amen. And then he says something that's important. For even young people, young people, you know, once I was young, I won't say I am old, but I'm older. And I know what it is like to feel young, because I felt young. But if I told you I feel young now, just ask me to run up and down a few times, and you see that I am not so young anymore. Even young people tire and drop out. Young folk in their prime stumble and fall. But there's an antidote. There's an answer from God in the last verse of this chapter. It says, but those who wait upon the Lord, those who wait upon God get fresh strength. They spread their wings and soar like eagles. They run and don't get tired. They walk and don't lag behind. Those that wait upon the Lord. Waiting upon the Lord, and I've shared this before, it comes from a Hebrew word, kavah, talks about many things, trusting God. But today I am taking waiting on the Lord from the perspective of fasting, prayer and fasting. And you know tomorrow we start a 21-day fast. 
Amen. But I want to say and be very clear that the objective of the fast is not ab abstinence from food. That's not the objective. The objective of the fast is to get fresh strength, to get a fresh anointing, to get fresh directions. And the reason for the abstinence from food is so that we can align ourselves, align ourselves with him so that we can receive from him. Those that wait upon the Lord shall have their strength renewed. Doesn't matter whether you're young or you're old. If you learn how to wait upon him, he, he sits high above the circle of the earth. There's nothing he doesn't know inside out. And he said, wait upon me and I will renew your strength. You will not drop out because you're weary. Burn out. I've, I've heard all kinds of words. Burn out. You get so caught up in something and tired, you burn out. So we're going into 21 days. And I don't like to say 21 days because what can happen to us is at the end of each day, we tick it off. I've fasted today. But you may have gained absolutely nothing because it was just an abstention from food. And that's what I hate for that to happen. We need to align ourselves. We need to start the day with him. We need to start the day with him. Continue the day with him. The fasting helps us, or the abstention from food, helps us to remove the obstacles that prevent us from getting closer to him. And I think it's such a great privilege that God invites us into his inner circle to be privileged with his strength. Not our strength. Our strength cannot amount to anything. But to be privileged with his strength. 